Hello all, welcome to this session of systems modeling and design. This is module 3 uh, of the uh, BTU syllabus in software engineering and module 1 and 2 have already been completed. Now, we will be discussing about the systems model. I am Dr. Shani Masan, professor from the Department of Information Science and Engineering, RV College of Engineering, Bangalore 560059 and my email is displayed and we will go forward with the uh, syllabus now. Uh, as per syllabus, I will be discussing about to differentiate system models, use UML diagrams and apply design patterns. Having completed the requirement engineering and agile methodology, at the end of requirement engineering and in the beginning of design process, we are actually going to build system models. Why we have to build model? What are the reasons? what are the advantages that we are going to discuss first and subsequently we will discuss about different ways of modeling the system before building the system and finalizing about the design. So, the references are already given uh, from Ayan Somerville, Scrum Primer, uh, Roger S. Pressman reference books and Pankaj Jalote as per meet you syllabus. Uh, the session is like this. We have system models uh, uh, for three sessions. Design and implementation is four sessions, which consists of context models, interaction models, structural model, behavioral model, model driven engineering and under design and implementation, we have introduction to RUP design principles and object oriented design, UML, design patterns, implementation issues and open source development. Four sessions are kept for design and implementation. Okay. The aim of this session is to introduce system modeling concepts that may be developed as part of the requirements engineering and system design process. So, at the end of this session, the student will understand what is modeling, justify why modeling is required before building a software system, appreciate fundamental system modeling perspectives of context, interaction, structure and behavior, be aware of the ideas underlying model driven engineering, know the difference between structural and behavioral models. These are the objectives of this session. What is modeling? Software systems are abstract and intangible and hence tend to be complex. For that matter, any complex system needs to be modeled before building the system, because a model represents essential characteristics of a complex system, which will not be possible to be identified in total in the beginning itself and which will not be possible to come to a agreement between the requirements and actually the design and implementation. So, system modeling is the process of developing abstract models of a system with each model representing a view of that system. A model is a view of the system because the same solution can be viewed in different ways especially in software, where the running aspect and the static aspect, which is actually the design time and then running time, the perspective or the perception is different. Due to this, we have to have a model both while designing as well as while running, so that it represents all aspects of a system and its environment etcetera. Modeling helps to understand information systems requirement 
completely from one end to another. Most of the times, the problems are because of lack of understanding of requirement. To make it clear, the verbal connotation or verbal explanation may not be enough many times. What happens is, the requirement that is given by the owner of the system or the person who is purchasing or the entity which is purchasing may be totally different from the developer or his understanding or the project manager and his understanding. So, by building a model and then coming together and discussing about the pros and cons and what is actually required. So, the requirement becomes very clear. So, in the end what happens is we do not have to do the things again and again. Though it is possible in software, but it is a very expensive thing. We all know a mistake that is found during requirement is much more cheaper to be corrected than when it is implemented. So, a model is built which is a simplified representation of all the most important characteristics of the system of either reality or the vision or the perception and then it is agreed upon that yes, this is the product that we are going to build. A picture is worth a thousand words. Most models use pictures to represent the reality or the perception or vision. Usually, the system model becomes the blueprint for designing and constructing or building an improved or a better system. A model in the end is a simplified representation of a complex system. Now, we will see what is system modeling. System modeling is the process of developing abstract models of a system with each model presenting a different view or perspective of that system. Since a picture is worth a thousand words, most models are some kind of graphical notation representing a system, which is now almost always based on notations in the unified modeling language. Why this unified modeling language is required is when we discuss about the model, irrespective of the understanding or the language being used, a graphical representation will give a better picture of the whole solution to the problem. And then once it is agreed upon, all the stakeholders, the person who is paying for the system, the entity which is using the system and uh, the people who are building the system and the people who are maintaining the system, who are testing the system, all these stakeholders, they have an understanding of how the system should work. And because of that, it becomes a streamlined approach to building the system and which will result in a better scalability, a reduced cost, improved uh, performance because of the understanding, better understanding of the system and better quality and in the end, even though we spend a little time in modeling the system, once the model is agreed upon and accepted by all the stakeholders, building or implementation or constructing the software becomes faster. So, in the end, we have got all the three factors of quality, which is cost effective, better quality and faster building, because we know what is required, the building or construction becomes faster. So, model driven analysis is a problem solving approach that emphasizes the drawing of graphical or pictorial system models to document and validate both existing and our proposed system. For an existing system, if some enhancement is to be done, we have to understand the system and then we have to represent the system uh, uh, graphically, so that our understanding is better and then we can build or enhance new systems, which will in fact coordinate with the existing system or which will enhance the functionality of the existing system. So, model driven analysis is very much essential for any medium to high complex systems. Of course, because modeling itself is taking our time and effort, 
for very trivial systems we may not need a model like for example, for building a wall we may not need a model, but if we want to build a house we want to have the blueprint and a plan and then according to that only we have to go forward. So, that is the idea of system modeling. Now, what are the benefits? We have already discussed some of the benefits. So, ease project management tasks because everybody knows what is to be built. It makes it easy for people to understand before and then go on achieving that. So, that in the CMM levels we will move up. CMM is capability maturity model that uh, they might have already discussed in requirement engineering. Okay. The second point is can provide complete views of a system as well as detailed views of subsystem, both complete view in total and detailed views of subsystems are available and because of that it is easier to modularize the system and then make building or construction of the system in parallel and also to build the interface between the system because we have understood the system well before. Clarify structures and relationships between these subsystems and offer a communication framework for ideas within and between teams. There are teams for developing, there are teams for testing, there are teams for uh, release and all these teams and also the stakeholders, uh, the uh, users of the system, all those people they have a framework now to understand what is to be expected, what is to be built. So, that there are no surprises while designing, while building and then while using the system. So, while discussing about this model, new ideas may be generated and new possibilities may be uh, formulated and new ways of looking at things. So, that to make the product much more better in quality can be found out. Subsequently, this will result in quality assurance and testing scenarios. So, that we can have we can be prepared with test document early in the life cycle of the software development and as soon as the product or the artifacts are ready, we can go about verifying and validating the product and by and large the system models are platform independent whether we are going to build it in java or c or c plus plus or windows or unix system or whatever it is usually the system models are supposed to be above the platform so that we are concentrating on the system rather than on the infrastructure and other things why modeling model is required to understand the existing software application to do any enhancement this we have already seen. Derive the requirements for a new software application by modeling which is not existing we will not be able to conceive in our mind what actually is required by modeling a system to our understanding and discussing with the people who are asking for the system or who are users of the system we will be able to exactly derive the requirements. So, that our design and uh, implementation or building of the system becomes much more accurate. Discuss different design proposals to optimize the solution architecture means we have alternate design proposals which is better, which is uh, cost effective for the job and uh, which is actually uh, faster to build depending on what is the requirement, depending on what is the requirement of the delivery of the system. So, different design proposals can be possible because we are, we are modeling and we are discussing among the stakeholders. So, subsequently we can document a software system structure and operations to create manuals for the system. If we have understood the modeling and if we have understood the requirements if we have understood the design during the modeling system, we can create operations manuals and system manual and all those things in a very clear way and we can start it early. So, that the entire system uh, 
uh, turnaround time will be reduced. To create test cases early in the software development life cycle and uh, testing should start from the requirement stage itself. Once we have understood the requirements clearly through modeling and accepting by discussion with the stakeholders and all that, we can create test cases early in the software development life cycle which can also be discussed along with the model with the stakeholders and confirm that this is our requirement and this is what is the product that is required. So, modeling is used to conceptualize, understand and communicate the functioning of a complex software system to stakeholders. This is why modeling is required and then pictorially it is shown, it is so much better when we see a picture requirements, it goes to model and then it comes to the software system. So, ambiguity is removed by modeling, requirements are existing systems and then model and from the model again the requirements can be modified and subsequently the software system can be built. So, it resolve ambiguities using clearly specified and standard set of modeling tools, we will see what are the tools of modeling. Models can provide a way to specify clearly system design, architecture and functionality. Models and aid communication between client and designer and models aid understanding of functionality of the system, how well a software system matches the desired process and so on. So, types of models, what are the types of models that can be built or that are required for a software system? A software system will always work in an environment like for example, when we are building a student management system let us say, when we are building a student management system we have to look into the aspects of admission system and aspects of uh, the examination system, the aspects of the academic systems the aspect of uh, the external uh, agencies with which uh, the education system has to coordinate like uh, AICT, university, uh, local government which is responsible for inspection and university grants commission etcetera. So, a system will work in an environment or a context. This is represented by the external perspective model representing the context or environment of the system. I have given this example because in future we are going to look into the example that is discussed in the textbook. Okay. An interaction perspective model where the interactions between a system and its environment or between the components of a system is represented. In the case of student management system, the interaction is between the academics and the classes that are going on, between the academic system and the faculty who are taking the class, between the academic system and the subjects that is to be taught, between the academic system may provide the timetable. Accordingly, the all the classes have to be arranged which is an interaction among these systems and the academic system should coordinate with the examination system and the academic and examination system should coordinate with the regulations of the university and uh, AICTE or UGC etcetera and then they have to communicate with each other and decide on the external examination communication within and decide on the internal assessment etcetera etcetera. So, this is an interaction perspective model and the subsequent thing is a structural perspective model showing the organization of a system or the structure of the data that is processed by the system. The organization is like for example, the principal, the departments, the department heads and the faculty and the timetable, classes are going on, classrooms etcetera, they are all structural perspective model showing the organization of a system. A behavioral perspective where the model shows the dynamic behavior of the system and how it responds to events that is actually the uh, timetable, 
and the portions that are covered, the subjects that are there, all those things be, they all come and who is taking the class and in each class how much is completed by the time first uh, uh, internal assessment comes, how much portions are completed, what are the questions that are there and are they meeting the uh, OBE standards, uh, all those things are basically a behavioral uh, perspective will come into picture. Now, how to represent a model? System models are usually represented graphically and so are the software system models. Graphical models are very popular because they are easy to understand, they are something beyond language. So, language deficiency and other things can be overcome and uh, uh, the most popular language that is used for modeling the system is unified modeling language which provides a standard for the artifacts of development, semantic models, syntactic notation and diagrams we will see that and UML popularly known as unified modeling language is known as UML is a general purpose developmental modeling language in the field of software engineering that is intended to provide a standard way to visualize the design of a system. The creation of UML was originally developed by Grady Bush, Ivan Jacobson and James Rombach. In 2005, it was approved by International Standards Organization and the UML standard is being periodically revised. That is about the unified modeling language which is used for modeling a software system. Now, we have up to this point, we have seen why modeling is required what are the different advantages of modeling and what is actually modeling and how modeling will be done. We will actually go into some details now. UML diagrams represent two different views of a system model, which is static view emphasizes the static structure of the system using objects, attributes, operations and relationships. It includes class diagrams and composite structure diagrams which you have already studied in object oriented programming and things like that. Other one is dynamic view which emphasizes the dynamic behavior of the system by showing collaborations among objects and changes to the internal states of objects. This view includes sequence diagrams, activity diagrams and state machine diagrams. To put it in a very simple way static view is actually you can say compiler time view of the system. While we are compiling the system, we have uh, the attributes and the classes and other things class diagrams and the structure diagrams will come in, but actually they are not running, we are only compiling it. When we are actually running the system which is actually the dynamic or behavior view, then this runtime representation of the system is called as the behavioral view or the dynamic view. So, compilation time view is static view more or less and runtime view is dynamic view. Okay. We will go forward. Universal modeling language, it has different diagrams. Why we need different diagrams is we have seen already static view and dynamic view and the perception at different points of time by different people and by different users. So, it is it requires a different kinds of diagrams so that our understanding of the system is complete at every point of time whether it is interacting, communicating or processing or accepting input or giving the output whatever it is or the state of the system when it is constant, when it is changing these things we have to study. Software being abstract and intangible we have to convey and plan and design these things through modeling and diagrams and finally, when we accept that all the stakeholders agree upon the solution we can start building it. There are different use case diagrams to illustrate user interactions with the system, class diagrams to illustrate logical structure, 
object diagrams to illustrate objects and links, state diagrams to illustrate behavior, component diagrams to illustrate physical structure of the software, deployment diagrams to show the mapping of software to hardware configurations, interaction diagrams, activity diagrams. So, it is not that all the diagrams are required for all the systems. Depending on the complexity of the systems, we are going to build some of the diagrams may be used may be enough and depending on if the complexity is more, more number of diagrams may be required to understand the whole working of the system. Pictorially it is shown this way a model may be having like for example, use case diagrams for user interactions, class diagrams for logical structure, object diagrams for objects and links, state diagrams for behavior, component diagrams for physical structure, deployment diagram for configurations, collaboration diagram for interactions, sequence diagrams for interactions, activity diagrams for flow of events. These are UML and diagrams. So, what diagrams are used during what stage of SDLC or system development life cycle, software development life cycle is? During requirement, we need use cases, sequence, classes, collaboration and activity, workflow etcetera. During design, we need to understand the state of the system and some portion of the sequence, some portion of the classes we have to do design uh, during uh, design time, components, what are the components that have to be identified during design, distribution and activity, the whole process is actually designed uh, during the time of design stage. Subsequently, for implementation, we need the details of the component as well as the distribution, how these components are distributed etcetera and so on. So, the system model representation, we will come to it now. There are context models, interaction models, structural models, behavioral models and model driven engineering. Why these kinds of models are required, we will see it. Context model is required to know the context of a system, means the environment in which the system is working. Probably the basic design question is, where do we start? How do we know the model is correct? How do we design the correct system? The answer lies in developing a context model. A context model is a model that shows how a system fit into the context of the environment means as we have already discussed student management uh, system if it is their SMS in what context it is to be done. For example, college management system if it is to be designed then in what context a college works in a context. What is the context? The context is maybe it is university, maybe it is AICT maybe it is UGC, maybe it is local uh, government which is inspection committee and maybe it is the parents, uh, CET, so many things are there and college management system sits in the middle and then it in this context it works. Who communicates with whom, what communications are taking place, all these things are not, the details are not represented in the context model, details are not included. It simply includes the environment, what are the other systems with which it has got any interaction or relationship. Context models provide an overview of an entire system and shows the most important aspects. Context models are most useful in the requirements analysis and design stages. So, this is actually about the context model. Context models are used to illustrate the operational context of a system which is actually the environment. A context model help identify system boundaries means what is the functionality of the system, what is the functionality which is outside the system, this we have to identify. So, that we can build functionality for the system and we can build interfaces for those functionalities which are outside the system boundary. Identifying system boundaries may depend on the context of social and organizational aspects of the system. Now, what we discussed about the 
uh, AACT and the university, they are all actually part social and part organizational aspects of the system. Context models show the system and its relationship with other system as we have already discussed. Now, we will see the textbook representation of the context model. I have already explained to you something about the student management system. We will see how actually our patient management system is similar to our student management system. Patient management system is discussed here according to the prescribed textbook, which shows the scope and boundaries of a system and no technical knowledge is required to understand the diagram, easy to draw and amend due to its limited notation, it is only boxes and then lines, easy to expand by adding related systems, only a box and a line, can benefit a wide audience including stakeholders, business analysts, data analysts, developers, etcetera. So, it is a very simple diagram, simple model, which shows the context. For example, an ATM system is having you know relationship with user, security system, maintenance system and account database. That is model of ATM showing external perspective. We are not looking into the internal of ATM, what are the external things that it has to work with. Second one is the context model for online store which is actually the shipping system is there, payment systems are there, inventory database is there, accounting systems are there, administration application etcetera. Now, we will come to the mental health uh, clinic uh, patient management system. Here in the center we can see mental health clinic patient management system, which is having other systems like patient record system, admission system, prescription system, appointment system and then statistics and collection, management reporting system. What we have to decide here sometime is whether what is the boundary of our patient management system, whether we should include record system also within the patient management system or we have to keep it as a separate system. There are pros and cons of deciding about these things. If it is part of the same system, then the system may become complex, but the speed with which the system works may be better. If it is in a different system, then perhaps the uh, response time could be more and uh, it has to be a separate system and the working of the patient management system may depend on patient record system. So, these are all the implications, but in a context when we see, we will be able to understand the dependencies of the system and what are all the other systems which are having uh, control or interaction uh, with the system. Okay. So, after patient uh, management system what are the prescriptions of the drugs if it has been done and uh, is there any appointment system or is it a separate system appointment has been taken and then he comes to the patient management system. These things we can design, these things we can decide and then we can design, they are the advantages. So, we can focus exclusively on collecting only consultation detail if we want or we can have patient personal information also included within the system and uh, in the end we can collect the statistics and uh, management reporting system, which is a separate system or it is part of this system, what information or what data we have to send it there, what is the output of the system and what should be the input to the system, these things we will be able to decide. So, this is context diagram of maintenance health clinic and patient management system. When we see this, we can easily see, we can easily uh, correlate this to our student management system. Like for example, this is the college management system, which is
this is university and this is AICTE and maybe somewhere here we have got accreditation board and then UGC and then local government may be having something very similar to our patient management system context diagram. We will go forward. Context models simply show the other systems in the environment, not how the system being developed is used in that environment. To know how the system is being used, we need what are known as process models. Process models reveal how the system being developed is used in broader business process. Basically, process model shows what are all the processes and basically the communication between those uh, subsystems. UML activity diagrams may be used to define the business process model. This is known as activity diagram. We can see the activity diagram, uh, the basics are activity diagrams are intended to show the activities that make up a system process and the flow of control from one activity to another activity. The start of a process is indicated by a field circle. Okay, we will go to the uh, next slide. This is actually the process model of involuntary detention. Okay. This is the uh, textbook example that is given here. Here the start of a system, uh, I will just explain about the system here first before going into the details. Basically, the thing is for those patients who need to be admitted to the hospital because of uh, requiring, require, requiring treatment for uh, uh, improving their uh, mental health. So, that decision has to be taken by the doctors and then this requires that they should be kept in a good environment without uh, any hurt and uh, they will not hurt themselves and they will not hurt others. They have certain rights which cannot be denied, physical harm should not be done to them and uh, this record detention decision must be taken by the mental health clinics uh, patient management system that means a consultant and an expert doctor they have to decide that this person requires treatment within the hospital and then once the patient admission is confirmed, it can be for any patient for that matter hospitalization is confirmed, then the patient has to be informed about the patient's rights, patient or the uh, patient's uh, uh, relatives and record the detention, uh, detect detention decision according to what reason that has come from patient monitoring system, the experts or the doctors advise and then once these two are done these two are done that is indicated by the vertical bar and when multiple arrows go into the vertical bar, it means once all these actions are completed, then a decision has to be taken. That means, if the patient is uh, uh, doing any harm to himself or others or he is dangerous, then subsequently he has to be put in a separate uh, ward or if it is required, then he has to be transferred to a separate hospital, which is actually shown here and find a secure place and if there is no uh, 
a secure place available, then perhaps uh, maybe he has to be put in a, a police station or something that is a large resort, if it is acceptable to the uh, patient etcetera, those things will come. This diamond mark will indicate a conditional uh, branch, if the patient is dangerous, then transfer to secure hospital, if he is not, then admit to hospital. For a normal disease, we can say, if it is contagious then put him into a sanatorium, if it is not then admit him to a normal hospital and a normal ward. Okay. Once he has been admitted to the hospital, then the hospital admission system will take care that uh, which ward is allocated to him, what are all the uh, drugs that is to be uh, given to him, who are the doctors, who are the nurses etcetera, all those things are taken care by admission system. And subsequently, we can see here another vertical bar which says that after this inform social care okay, about a patient that is he is being admitted to the hospital, inform next of kin that is the relations of the patient and then update the register. Update the register may be a continuous process because as, as the patient progresses then the register has to be updated and subsequently information from MHC PMS will come and then according to that uh, the final decision about the uh, releasing the patient from the or uh, uh, discharging the patient from the hospital is taken care. This is actually the end symbol of the whole process which is actually a filled circle within another circle. This is the starting symbol which is actually a filled circle. These are actually activities which are having round edges in a rectangle and the arrows indicate the movement of decision or movement of uh, activity from which point to which point. Bars indicate that the tasks before the bars have to be done and subsequently the vertical bar will indicate that before uh, this all these operations have to be completed and subsequently the diamond indicates the decision uh, uh, node. Okay. So, here it is explained rectangles with round corners represent activities which are sub processes and must be carried out. A solid bar is used to indicate activity coordination. When the flow from more than one activity leads to a solid bar, then all of these activities must be complete before progress is possible. When the flow from a solid bar leads to a number of activities, these may be executed in parallel. Arrows may be annotated, that is the diamond arrow, diamond symbol with guards that indicate the condition when that flow is taken. Please understand these are all the ways of modeling a process where the multiple activities are shown here. Once these activities are completed, then decision uh, node is shown here. If decision has to be taken, subsequently these things are uh, taken care. Uh, this gives the whole process of the uh, mental health care PMS and then the involuntary detention uh, process. And then we will see into a another process, this is activity diagram of a library. We can see here the starting and the ending, the conditional branch and then a member comes and he will find a book on the shelf and, and he will wait in the queue if he wants to uh, take it or a member comes, he wants to return the book and then he will directly go to the queue and then subsequently he will come to returning or borrowing and uh, uh, when he returns uh, the record is updated, when uh, then the book is put back on the shelf and then we can see here the horizontal bars that means these activities can be done in. Uh, parallel and then if it is borrowing record the borrowing subsequently 
prepare for the next member who comes and then it gets repeated. So, now in this session we have seen what is a model, the need for a model of the software system and the context diagram, what are all the different diagrams that can be used in modeling language, unified modeling language and we have seen about the use of unified modeling language for modeling, activity diagram how to draw and how to represent we have seen and in the next class we will go further about the other diagrams of the unified modeling language. Thank you.